You're welcome back, and this is TV3 New Days. Time now for The Big Issue. Thank you so much for staying with us. And if you just joined us, good morning to you. I hope you had a restful sleep, but we're looking forward to the rest of the day. And today is a big day for us here at Media General because we're officially launching your election command center. And that follows right after uh, TV3 New Day. And so make sure to stay with us so we can update you on what exactly it is we've done so far and what we intend to do to make sure that you are well prepared and well informed um, about the elections. But just before we carry on, let me remind you that Cash Out is on. Three people will win a thousand Ghana cities each before the end of this show. And you stand the chance of winning only if you grab your phones. In fact, pick it up now and just dial star 439 hash. Select option two and you should be good to go. But make sure you're a Telesol subscriber or an MTN subscriber. Once you dial star 439 hash and select option two, just relax, follow the prompts and don't stop there. Pick your phone again and play at least 10 times every 10 minutes or five minutes. So make sure that once you pick your phone, you're playing constant 10 times. You put it down for maybe like 20 seconds. You pick it again, another 10 um, you know, slots for you. And that increases your chances of winning that 1,000 Ghana CDs. It hits your Momo account or your Telesel um, account almost instantly. In fact, not almost, instantly. So make sure you dial. Um, but this morning, we'll be looking at a very important issue. As it stands now, we're nearing, if not there already, a food security crisis in the country, which is why two days ago, the Minister for Agri, Honorable Brian A. Champon, um, at a press briefing officially announced that there was an immediate ban on the exports of grains into other countries. And that's because there had been a drought, or there has been a drought in about eight regions in the last couple of months. And so for a lot of farmers, they've invested so much money um, into planting uh, their grains. And unfortunately, the rains have not come. And so they are on the verge of losing so much money. And he gave details as to exactly how much money they are losing. So we're told that um, by the end of this whole planting season, we're looking at 928,522 farmers and 1,857,000,000 hectares that will be affected. So revenue losses is estimated at 22.2 billion Ghana cities. And that's 10% of the GDP, um, our Greek GDP. Okay, so that's a lot of money that we're going to be losing by the end of this planting season if we don't find a solution, which is why he announced that ban. But the finance minister was there as well, and he also mentioned that there was some eight billion US dollars that they were hoping to find or raise to inject into the Greek sector just to you know, manage the situation at the moment. Now, yesterday, we realized that a letter had been written to the Finance Committee in Parliament asking for a withdrawal of that $8 billion from the contingency fund. So I'll read that letter to you shortly. But it's a full house today. Let me introduce my guests. And I'll start off from the very end. Uh, and then we'll come to our friend who has been away for quite a while. But we're glad that she's back. Who is glad? Nobody is glad. <laughs> say that I am glad. Don't say me okay. Yeah. So Beatrice Anan Esquire is the spokesperson for John Mahama's campaign team. Deputy. 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 Deputy spokesperson. spokesperson. Forgive me. Good to see you this morning. Good to see I you. I think this is the first time I've seen you without black and white. Too. I like your fabric. <laughs> oh. No courts today. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are in a full campaign mood. So I no see. Yeah. No, I really like your outfit. Thank you look nice. You. How have you been? I've been fine. Mm. I, I'm just tired because yesterday... We brought the phase one of our Greater Accra campaign to an mm. end. Okay. So I got home quite late, but we still have to keep going. So I'm happy to be here. You've been mocking the vice president, not you. But oh, I mean, you're... yes, yes. yes. Yeah, the, the vice president has been mocking himself. I mean, when he speaks, you have to wait for four days to be sure that <laughs> he's not joking so we can respond. Oh, and okay. so we've not Let been mocking. You know, ah, have you forgotten? Let me move The on. miracle said, add emoji, TV3. <laughs> Be adding emojis to the president's statement. I'm not the one saying it. Madame Rodolin <laughs> Imoru Ayana is a member for Alliance for Revolutionary Hi. Change. Good morning, ma'am. How are you good doing? Good morning. I'm fine. And yourself? I'm good, thank you. I see you're also wearing your GTT this morning. Yes. Ready definitely. for battle. Ready for battle. All day, every day. <laughs> yes. But you've had a good week so far? Yeah, we have. All right. And we, we will be around Mam Wobi and Nima and mm. its environs this I afternoon. See. Okay. So everyone well, is welcome. Thank you for joining us. Nana Yachim Pimjanto is a uh, former general secretary for the CPP, who, by the way, yesterday announced that they have two candidates who are hoping to represent 
represent the party, party in the election. So they have, what, seven days uh, yes. for that election to happen? Election, yes. You have okay. to go to Congress okay. uh, to choose one of the two. That's certainly good news. A lot of yes. people have been asking when yeah. the CPP will elect yes. the flag bearer. So, so we are going to do elect the flag bearer. Um, mm. Our former chairman, Nana Frempo Mansa Ponkuma Nkuma, and lawyer Anochi Frempo. Mm. Yeah, so. Okay. I see. We're looking so, forward to yeah, it. Yeah, we are looking forward to it. But I hope you are too. well. Yeah, I'm very well. Mm. It's just that today I have an alien sitting by me. And this it's morning, a, why are you meeting us? And, and it is, it is a bit uncomfortable. Why is it uncomfortable? Because aliens are not supposed to be on Earth. Who is the alien here? You know who the alien is? I don't know. The people who have left and they have come back. Oh, okay. L let me just welcome Lerato. How can you welcome Lerato? Who is an alien? Oh, Nanaya. Let me welcome her. That's Musa Saka as a communications team member for the NPP. She disappeared, but we're glad she's and back. And Deputy <laughs> Chief Executive of Postal and Courier Commission. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. I, I missed that one. title Deputy too. Deputy Chief Executive. Good to yeah. see you. Uh, Postal Where and have you been? Commission. Oh, okay. Where have I been? Mm. I've been around. You've been around? Yes. So, so why did you do guys like that? So we, are not, we are the kind of party that believes in consensus, that believes that when we are not happy about something, you we need to discuss it and trash it out. I mean, there are different ways of uh, protesting. We are not the kind of mm. group that will go throwing tantrums and uh, doing boots for boots. We discuss, and uh, you know that that has been what has gone on. Mm. We're not happy about certain things on uh, the set. We've had discussions. This is not a place to come and uh, be talking about it. We've come to... Uh, an amicable agreement, mm. and we are back to do what we've been doing. So for Nanaya to call me an alien, that's interesting. But she has a very strange way of showing love to us. So okay. it's nothing, I don't take it. Uh, uh, you love her right back, right? I'm sure you've missed her. Oh, she's missed me more than I've missed her. You've missed Beatrice as she's well. She's too excited. Beatrice is just excited we are back, that's all. I see. Are you excited to be back yourself? I mean, why not? Okay. To let Ghanaians know what we are doing. But mm. when you're on set yeah, and um, you are not able to, you feel you are not able to do what you're supposed to be doing and you find, you find yourself mm. constrained, you need to let whoever. It's, it's, um, we are in this together. I see. So when we are not happy about something, we need to show it. And that this wasn't, it happened a couple of times and we mm. just had to okay. take a step back and make sure that it's uh, solved and solved well. No worries. Well, let's get into our conversation now. And yesterday Bella, we... Before we start, uh, when you were opening, you mentioned $8 billion. Okay. It's it's not $8 billion. Sorry, it's cities. cities. Yes, yes, thank you for it's that. 500, it's 500 million It's 500 cities, million rather. dollars. You're right. Yes. Thank you. And uh, eight point. Thank you for that correction. And so we'll hear from the minister um, when he spoke about this. And in fact, there was a letter that we received from um, the finance committee. In fact, the Ministry of Finance, and it says request to use the contingency fund. And this was a letter we're told or an alert that was given to uh, the finance committee in parliament per the law to ask for the Ministry of Agreed, Agreed to move into a contingency fund and withdraw that 500 million Ghana cities um, so they can also get access to the money to figure out what we're going through in the agric sector. So let's listen to the finance minister very quickly, and then we'll take a look at exactly what the reasons are for this money. So it will only take somebody who lacks severe knowledge mm. to understand that if you are building a house and you pay an architect, okay, 5% of the cost, and the architect has brought you a design, does it mean that that will not form part of the cost of building the house? That, oh, you've paid, uh, you, you, the cost of your house is 1 million Ghana cities. You've paid 100,000 Ghana cities to an architect who's only giving you a design. And somebody comes and says that you are, you are corrupt. Uh, um, nothing has, has been done on the site. There's no building on the site. And therefore, there's no justification for paying the structural engineer, for paying the architect, for paying for the MEP, only to have a piece of paper in your hands. It only takes people who are uninitiated in these kinds of things to believe that government, a government who needs money, will take $11 million and give it to a Chinese contractor. The that, that what has gone on so far are only groundwork, is, is preparatory stages. Absolutely. Mm. 
Mm. And if you if you if you study the contract, mm. you realize that nothing has gone wrong. And I'm using a basic analogy mm. that if you are, want to build a house and you pay an architect, uh, a structural engineer, an MEP, and all those things, and they give you a piece of paper and there's nothing on site, does not mean that there's no work being done, right? Let me go straight to that um, letter that we received and we'll read that and also give you an idea of exactly how much they're asking for, what exactly it is they're asking for. But earlier you heard from the Honorable Minister for Agri, Brian Champon, and he was giving reasons as to why uh, a certain amount of money was released for the Pualugu Dam and why it has stalled over time. It's also one of the promises that the Vice President has made with regards to Pualugu Dam because he followed up on this, he made that promise and says he will still ensure that the Pualugu Dam is completed. But let's read um, the text now. So I'll move on just to point two. It says, in the letter under reference, Ministry of Food and Agri indicates that as a result of protracted poor rainfall in eight regions of the country, namely the northern, upper east, northeast, savannah, upper west, Bono, Bono East and Oti, crop production have been significantly disrupted, resulting in food shortage, one, loss of farmer investment income, decline in GDP and increase in security threats and extremism. So in view of the above, the Ministry of Food and Agri is requesting for funding estimated at 8.36 billion Ghana cities to implement a number of measures to avert a full-blown food security crisis, including mopping up stock from farmers, urgent importation of grains and cash transfers, as well as input support to affected farmers. Mr. Chairman, considering that we are eight months into the implementation of the 2024 budget and the proposed interventions are unplanned expenditure occasioned by force majeure, we, which is government, cannot fund the request of the 8.3 billion Ghana cities solely from a reallocation of existing budget lines in the 2024 budget. So it says, in light of the foregoing, we write to request approval from the Finance Committee for the withdrawal of 500 million Ghana cities from the contingency fund. In accordance with Article 177, subsection 1 of the 92 Constitution, Section 36, subsection 1 of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921, as well as Section 227, subsection 1 of the Standing Orders of Parliament. To complement this withdrawal, government is mobilizing support from development partners, as well as realigning approved fiscal operations in the 2024 budget. I mean, this is what the finance minister is saying, but if you listen... Um, to the Northern Patriots in Research and Advocacy Executive Director. He says that, really, we should be at the point where we're declaring a state of emergency instead of asking for this amount of money. The Peasant and Farmers Association also do not agree with the ban as well. So let's get into the conversation. Lato, I'll, sta I'll start off with you on this amount of money. The NDC, in fact, have spoken on this matter, and they don't know why we've been able to invest so much in the cathedral, that hole that we have, and yet you can't find 500 million Ghana CDs just to figure out the, the challenges that we have in the Greek sector. What do you say to that? Uh, good morning, Bella. Good morning to, uh, should I say, my sisters. And uh, good morning to you. Um, I don't think um, when it comes to situations like this, I mean, we need to be accountable, no doubt about that. And two days ago, when the ministers met the press at the Ministry of Information, conference room. They were clear about accountability. But when you get into a situation where everyone agrees this is a crisis situation, you put measures in place. I don't think uh, that's how come the Minister for Finance, mm. Minister responsible for finance, has written to Parliament. That's the process that it has to go through. The Minister of Finance cannot just say just because we need to go ahead of uh, a projected uh, crisis, mm -hmm. he should just get up and dip his hand into the contingency fund. There are processes for how funding, but when you limit it to just the amount of money that is being um, asked for and just leave it there, what is the situation? They did the appropriate thing by meeting up with press to let Ghanaians know the situation we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with a dry spell. Ideally, by first week, second week in September, at least uh, for uh, grains and cereals and other crops, mm. that should be time for harvesting. Today is what? 29th 
uh, September, August. They have, they August mm. like a few days away. Do you wait for harvest to get, us to get to harvest time before you start putting measures in place? And don't let us also forget that the agri ministry just doesn't revolve around just uh, these things. They do a lot of things. There are different departments. The extension officers that report. So whatever they are saying, whatever the minister is saying, is information from what is happening on the ground. Mm. Eight, eight regions out of 16 regions is something that we all need to be worried about. Mm. And with what the finance minister said, we need some $500 million. Uh, mm -hmm. That's an equivalent mm -hmm. of uh, $500 million, Beatrice. That's an equivalent of eight point. What they're asking for? This no, what I'm saying is in total. Okay. Uh, total. Yes. okay. okay. In total, we need some $500 uh, million. Dollars. That's an equivalent of eight, some 8.2 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. They are looking at talking to our development partners. Some are going to um, support in kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need farm inputs. We need other things. We need to get grains in, especially for grains. Mm -hmm. It's not just for what we use it for. It's not for just for the banku and the uh, kinky and all that we eat. Poultry farmers also use these grains as poultry feed mm. for them. So it's quite a, a demand for it. We need money. So if someone, uh, a partner decides, okay, I'll bring in this uh, number of um, uh, tons of uh, cereal, it's mm -hmm. all part of the support. But immediately, and like he said, we've gone almost uh, eight months, going into nine months of the implementation of the 2024 <laughs> budget that uh, was passed in 2023. Mm -hmm. It's not for the fun of it that economists will put uh, uh, policies in place, put uh, projections in place, and add satiris, paribus, mm. proviso, all other things being equal. We find ourselves, everybody expected, we anticipated. But in the South, there's been some amount of it. And, you know, doing this, mm. apart from trying to salvage the eight regions, that's, uh, I think, the five regions in the northern mm -hmm. sector, yeah. Bono, Bono East, and I think Oti, mm -hmm. They also need to keep an eye on the south so we don't get into that situation. Farmers are farmed. Mm -hmm. They've put inputs. They've invested. If you are familiar with how a cropping season is, it's when farmers uh, get to harvest in that they make uh, the money they put in. It's just like doing poultry. You mm -hmm. bring the day-old chicks in. You feed them till they either they start laying or if they are broilers, they are uh, big enough to be sold as uh, meat. So it's a whole process. But for two months, for those who took advantage of the early uh, rainy season, in Ghana, they've seen some. But when you talk to farmers on the ground, mm -hmm. what do we do? We need to put interventions in. Right now, what are you going to do? Ministry of um, um, Agri? Agriculture budget uh -huh. for other identified uh, activities and uh, programs and projects they have. Mm -hmm. Are you now going to realign it? Why do we have contingency? That is why it's going to Parliament. If Parliament in is yesterday, I heard, uh, I think the ranking member required uh, demanding certain things. Definitely, they are there to do due diligence and whatever our money is but, being used for. But Lerato, we've yes. had, we, you've been in government for eight years. Now, one of your mm. most popular yes. um, projects, if I may say, policies, yes. planting for food and jobs, and then one district, one dam. Yes. I remember that when the minister, current minister for fisheries, when she was being vetted, because she had been the Minister for Special Initiatives, one of the things that she was supposed to do was to ensure that we have about 500 dams across the country, especially in the areas where we need um, irrigation all year round. She gave a figure of 426 dams built under the One Village, One Dam Initiative. In fact, she even gave an amount of money that was spent. She said it was about 200,000 to 250,000 per dam. So if these dams really have been built in these areas, why are we facing droughts? Because the whole idea was to provide these dams so that when the rains are not falling, we still have enough water ha harvested to take care of these farms. What is happening to these dams? So what do you... Well, I'm trying to get the data that I had for the dams. I think they've built some, constructed some uh, 400... But as we go well, on now, what get, the minister said, 400 and, 400 and well, something. Well, she the, says out of the, the target of to, 471, uh, we executed 426. Yes. So if you know fully how, completed. if you've been around some of these dams, like I said on another um, station, uh, between, I saw a couple of them mm -hmm. between, and I'm not too conversant with the solar wire 
road, the towns on that road. But at least I know within uh, some districts within the savannah, I'll get the, uh, the dams have been. These are dams, small air dams mm -hmm. that save water during the rainy season. And if you realize, the ones who are able to take advantage, I mean, if a dam is, let's say, this enclave of TV3, mm -hmm. let's say the car park of TV3, there's a small air dam. Okay. I mean, it wouldn't really, be, uh, those who, who are closer to it make more benefit of it. And usually, if you realize, if you follow how these, uh, the people who cultivate uh, vegetables benefit more from these dams than those in the wider. So if you have a dam here, mm -hmm. someone who farms at, uh, is it uh, the cocoa, is it cocoa board um, re guest house uh -huh. or rest house? Uh -huh. there, it's closer to the dam. Uh -huh. They are small at dam, small at dam. But don't also forget that apart from that, that was to augment all year uh, season. Exactly. Within the local areas. Uh -huh. The 400 day. But when you aggregate everything, in terms of vegetables, you can say that those who are farming around there have made a lot of benefit from those small dams. But we must also admit that. So you need that. this at the we beginning. Must also admit that, mm -hmm. We must also admit that some of the air dams are not able to hold water for a long time. But if an air dam, right, small dugout is supposed to save water and you haven't had uh, rain, Forget how much water will be in there. That's a problem. The, Nobody why denies we need that. These dams? But you have now, if, if you listen, that. some of them are doing well. Some are not doing some? well. Some? How many? Do you know how many? What number did you give me? The four twenty-six. Yes, that's what. The that's what the minister figure, said. Yes, are the these dams said. all? Don't you also forget. Hold on, that. hold on. Are all these dams with water? Because I remember that As I sit here, in, uh, sometime in twenty twenty-three. There was a documentary that was done by our yes. sister station, Joy FM. Okay. They visited a number of these 20, dams. 2023. Yes. Okay. A number of these dams, and they were all dried up. It was just a few of them that Where? had water in it. I wish I could mention the names. I was hoping that we could play, um, you know, the video. Sure. I hope that we can still do in it. In 2023, so that, yes. where? Hold on, hold on. I'll yes. get you those names so that we know mm. exactly where. But he visited the northern region and the northeast. Now, there were dams in some of those areas, and he, like, there was a whole video of the dams dried up. And I'll give you those names yes. when I come to it. But let me just come to Nanaya so that she can speak to it while I get those names okay. um, for you. And I hope that we can play this video just for everyone else so to see. So that I can also give you no what else. So Nanaya, so, so you're listening to Lerato, and she thinks that it's justified to ask for more money to address the situation. What do you think? Hmm. Bella, good morning. Good morning to my auntie and my sisters. Good morning to you. Good morning to your um, your viewers out there. This is a government who said in 2020 that even trust to trust go dig it out. And this is a government that always finds a way through the constitution to cause mischief. Because any time that they want to do their thing, they call the constitution. The lawyer is here. If I'm wrong, you should tell me. This is what I found. 1771. They shall yeah. be paid into the contingency fund. Monies voted for the purpose of parliament and advances may be made from the fund which are authorized by the committee responsible for financial measures in parliament. Whenever that committee is satisfied that there has arisen an urgent or unforeseen need for which money should be taken out of the fund. No, no, continue. For which no other provision exists. Okay. Continue. I wanted to end it. At least whatever I have is enough for me. So you can help me from there. Okay. Bella, I'm very sad this morning. I'm very... I'm mortified. I'm cold. I, 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 I my blood is, 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 is cold this morning. Because when I heard this, I was like, what is the meaning of this? What are they using the money for? Eight billion Ghana cities at the end of the day. What kind of play? Yesterday, I heard the meteorological survey survey department saying that they even warned government that there's yeah. going to be a drought. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you get me? And when they warned government, they warned the farmers. Mm -hmm. 
what did government do? You see, a responsible government will have a plan, a contingency plan, not to take money out of the contingency fund. Seriously speaking, looking at what they said they are going to do, mopping up what grains. They are talking about grains. They haven't talked about uh, um, vegetables, legumes. They said grains. Mm -hmm. Mopping up to put it where? Do we have the bands of Joseph of the land of Egypt in this country? Where is the bands to keep these grains? Where? Buffer stock. Where do they keep the, the food? I mean, where, where, how are they going to preserve these grains without it attracting weevils? You see, when... So they don't have a forecast department where they would know that there's going to be a drought. What happened to one village, one dam? What happened to the dams that they, pro they promised us? Pualugu, they spent some amount of okay. money. $12 million. Yeah. $12 million. Yeah. That is no small money. 12 million damn dollars. 192 million. Do you, do you get me? Mm -hmm. And they, ha they haven't done anything. And you come and tell us that you need 8 billion to do what? To fight what? It, it does not make sense. Sometimes if you hear people even trying to defend this, they say that um, investment, loss of farmer investment, what's the meaning of that? Hmm. You are going to share money to the <laughs> farmers because it's an election year. They are coming to use our money. <laughs> what is the Hold meaning on. Of So that? the minister said that farmers have already invested monies into their crops. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, they've lost those amounts of money. Uh -huh. So they are hoping to replace that with the monies they're giving Please, them. how do you, you replace the money? How are you going to do it? How would you know that the farmer would have sold? But have losses. Have they ever replaced money for farmers? Or even put in place measures to deal with post harvest mm -hmm. losses? Mm -hmm. So they want to find a way to be giving money to because it's an election year. He's the one who said that by all means they are going to win. Me, when I saw him in your interview, I thought that why is it the same person? Now the makeup is off, the intoxication of the of, of the stages off, and he looks like a very ordinary human being. Why do you say that? Yes, because the way he behaves when he's on stage on a campaign trail, the thing that he says is a different person we are seeing here. Do you understand me? So at the end of the day. Eight billion Ghana cities is going to be used for what? Who, which are, who are the farmers? It should have been in the letter. What work have they done to show that farmer, a farmer? You can't come and tell generically that, oh, Bono, this region, eight, uh, six, eight regions and some other regions, some other areas. Who are the farmers? Who and who are going to benefit from Who and who have lost crops? They should come and tell us. You can't just come and put a figure there that we need this amount of. And for me, what is Parliament doing about it? Because we have 137 who are who who, who are not part of government. They are not opposition because Parliament is a hand Parliament. It is equal. You don't have any um, majority in that Parliament. What are they also telling us? They are our representatives. Bella, what are they telling us? Are they going to approve this? Because according to the constitution, parliament has to go through parliament for parliament to approve. So we have this kind of money in Ghana here, 500 million, and the government could not go to contingency fund to get 4 million to pay for dialysis. Hmm. Well, I'm asking you. And the people are dying, they don't have places to sleep in the hospital. Pregnant women are giving birth on the floor. And you have 8 billion to do what? Because you see, they should give us better particulars on this. Bella, I, I don't understand this concept. I cannot wrap my head around it. It does not make sense. It is as if it's the conduit for somebody to chop money because they just saw the opportunity and now they have to go and get money to come and chop. I don't understand this, Bella, because when you are, you are dealing with issues of drought, you always have a plan ahead of time because you know that there will be drought. You don't wait for the drought to come. And now you have planting for food and jobs phase two. That one you were spending only $2.8 million. Um, How come this one $500 million? For what? Bella, what do they want to do? This, this, these people will just finish us all. <laughs> no, seriously, they will just finish this country if we don't rise. 
Bella, we need to rise in this nation. We need to make sure that these people are no longer in government. Because they will know at every city, every dollar, they will chew. They will, they, they will, they, they, I don't even know what to, because it does not make sense. The letter, every, and I'm surprised Amin can write this letter. What should he have done? Ah, how can you come and write this letter? With be, where are the better particulars? This one should come with a memo, an addendum. Telling us, do some work. Tell us, convince us, this is our money. Money in the contingency fund is our money. And Rada, do you agree to this? Because again, I'm, I'm reading a message here. Hajia Halima Tabaraka. She says that, Bella, the dams are for holding water. And since the rains haven't yet come, what a help might have been used by the farmers and communities in anticipation for the rain. I can tell you for a fact that some of these dams dried up two months afterwards. And I have, um, I'm, I'm listing the areas. So there's Bongo District, the Ayopia Dam is one of the areas. In fact, that was where the sod was cut for the whole one district, one dam, um, you know, per the documentary. Kachina Nankana West District in Upper East Region as well. That one, we're told that the embankment broke just two months after the dam was constructed. And so all the water just, you know, went out and they lost all the water. But this person is trying to explain that these dams were supposed to hold water only when it rains. <laughs> if there's drought and there's no yeah, rain. Yeah, no hold dams. water for what? Oh, no you, you, you let me ask Auntie Rhoda. I'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah. I'll come back. But this is the explanation that this lady is trying to give for the reasons why some of these dams are But this dry. one asks Lara to hold water. Oh, don't worry. I'll come to Lara to again. I want to. At mm. all times. That's why it's a dam. Well, yes. What do you make of this? And, um, and comparing morning. it to the request that okay. the Agri Ministry has Good morning, made. Ghana. And good morning to all viewers watching us this morning. Um, my special greetings to Mr. Alan Chramating. I hope you're doing well. Bella, a dam is a dam. It's supposed to hold water all year round. It is very disheartening to sit here and talk about food shortages. Um, for a country like Ghana, we should have seen this coming. This is not something that we just woke up and realized that there's drought and there is shortage of food. We have been complaining about the cost of food. We started complaining about the cost of food years ago. And someone should have listened and someone should have worked on it. Because there must be a reason why there was that hike in food prices. So if a country like us, who border other countries um, that are supposed to be desert, and we sit and we import onions, we import um, tomatoes, we import grains, all these grains that the um, agri minister is saying, we, are already, we don't even export grains. We import the beans. Most of the beans, the, the, the maize, the soya bean, and all that, we import them into this country. Because over the years, we have actually stopped doing the right things. Mm. Um, I'm just wondering what one, um, the food, planting for food and jobs. And jobs, yes. Yeah, what they've achieved. I'm really wondering, because if you're supposed to be planting for food and jobs, and you spent almost 2.9 million On it since from 2017 till date, we have not seen anything. There are things that we are not doing right. It's not a question of buying tractors all the time. I've noticed that particular administration and the administration before this, all that they believe in is buying tractors. Tractors are not always the main components for farming. But because there's always a need to profit from these things, it's always bringing in tractors. You should take a drive to mechanization, agri mechanization, just around the Air, Air Force Base, and look at the rotten tractors and other things, the Abobo Yas and all those things. That is money. That belongs to Ghanaians, being wasted. So asking us to give you 500 million, for what? What kind of grains are you going to import? If you cannot implement simple policies that you bring out, that schools should use Ghana-made rice, made in Ghana rice or made in Ghana, whatever, made, grown in Ghana. If you cannot police that, and they are still importing or using imported rice, there's something wrong with you. So if we sit here and we say that a government or a ministry that has failed in its responsibilities to see to it that there is food in this country, then there's a problem. We must ask where all those money went, all those investments. You're talking about farmer investments. We were in this country when um, the northern region grew rice. I think that was about two years ago. There was a bumper harvest. 
and yet there were no processing plants mm. to process the, the, the rice. No mills. It ended up with farmers having to try to coerce people to buy their inputs with guinea fowls. At that time, what did they do? What has changed? It's just that attitude of not really sitting and doing what they are supposed to do. This is, I mean, it's so outrageous to think that in this country we are still looking at rain. A rain-dependent country, when other people are finding ways and means of, of rain. You know, we're even seeing, if you go to um, Burkina Faso, just across, they're growing strawberries. They are, they are now growing bananas in the desert. Mm. And we are sitting here with all our rivers and all that, and we are complaining about hunger. Why? It means that some people mm. are not just doing the right things. You know, when, 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 when they mention the sums of money, 500 million, 100 million, suddenly I get a headache. Why? Because, you see, we, we are beginning to make the dollar look like the city. Dollar, dollar is not our currency. Mm. And Bella, when you go across, you go to Europe, you go to America, I think somebody, when somebody says, I've made $1 million, it's, it's a party. Lot. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for that person to say, I have made $1 million. In Ghana, we mention the dollars as if it's chicken change. And it's all because we do not understand the impact of misusing the monies that we get from our natural resources. That is, that, that's the major problem. I don't think that we need to give them any money at this time. I think that we need to have them sit down and give us their plan, give us the way forward that they are going to be able to manage this money. You mean the Greek ministry? Yes, the Greek ministry. We don't have to give them the money now. No, no, no. no. Well, well, the money is not necessarily going to them because they are giving it to the farmers. Which farmers? Where is the list? Where, where is the list of farmers? Who are Please. the farmers? Who are they? You Did check. You, know? you, you try and do. Just check. Who are the farmers? It's going to go to party apparatchiks. That is you what can't going say to happen. Oh, that is mm -hmm. what I've mean, spoken to some of the farmers. I Peasant am, Farmers Association. I, they even had a press conference two days before this announcement was made. And in fact, they were asking for some support because they said they had lost monies that they had invested into, um, you know, their crops. And so they were asking for some support. The only challenge they have is the ban because for them, they don't see how the ban is going to fix the problem. There was a ban, I believe, last year, two years ago, for the same challenge. And they said that because of that, they could not even sell the little harvest that they had. They lost money because the prices just dropped. And so they were expecting that governments would at least say that we're pegging the price of grains at this amount. So buy it at this amount and nothing less. So that's their only concern. But they've also asked for the support. But how is government going to peg prices? <laughs> when government doesn't give free fertilizer, yes. when government doesn't give free inputs, how can government fix prices? It's impossible. Okay. And therefore, for me, the farmers, if there is a farmer list, they should bring it out. And let's see. Let, we can identify every farm. Any major farmer, we will know. You understand? Mm. How much they, they claim they have invested, we will know. I mean, we are in this country and we are importing poultry like no other business. You understand? And then yet, you read that, oh, 10 million or whatever uh, uh, chicken, chicks mm -hmm. have been imported to be given to farmers, all sorts of things. It's just the money going down the drain. Okay, let me bring Beatrice in because your side has raised objections to this request for money. But really, at this point, we actually do need the money, don't we? Bella, thank you very much. I, I think that I, I don't even know where to start from. It's a very sad pattern we are creating in this country. And if we don't take care, the impunity with which the MPP is lying and misusing our resources and creating avenues for corruption. If we don't take care, we will have no nation to live in. And, and you know, sometimes I wonder really what, what kind of discussions these groups of people have when they meet. Mm -hmm. That there is, there is nobody who is a person of conscience amongst the MPP who will stand up to say that no to some of, some, some of these things must it always be like this. You see, Bella, nobody will be against any intervention calculated to support the farmer. 
In fact, I come from a political party whose tradition supports farmers. I can readily recall the free fertilizer for cocoa farmers, the Isuchuare outgoing for rice farmers that the NDC engage in, the free seedlings, and many other interventions. So the Ghanaian farmer is well aware that if there is any political party that supports farmers, mm. it will be the NDC. What we are having to discuss, it is just government using farmers to front, to front, front a corruption like they use COVID. Why are you saying that? So let me prove to you, Bella. In the letter that you read, please go along with me and look at paragraph three. The government is saying that in view of the eminent shortage, they would need 8.3 billion for the following. The first one is to mock up stock from farmers. Where are the stocks to be mopped up? We are importing tomatoes. We are importing onions for Niger. We are importing so many things. So where are the stocks that this government wants to mop up? And from which farmers? Because they sought to limit this whole discussion for cereals. So is it the case that farmers have stock now that government wants to mop up? And Bella, sometimes government shouldn't think that Ghanaians are stupid or the Ghanaian farmer is stupid. If I am a farmer and you are telling me there is a drought coming and I have stock, you think I'll sell it to government now? You think I'll not mop up the stock because the higher the supply and the lower the supply, the higher the price, and then I'll keep them in my silos for how long for because, as long as i can sell yeah, because you cannot export it and that's what they were saying they, that they, the they cannot, the last time affected no, them. they cannot export it to where they don't want to export even here if you're saying there will be a shortage it means that prices will go up and the farmer will benefit then the second thing they say is that they will do urgent importation of grains is it that the countries they are importing from, yeah, those countries do not, I mean, they are also going to suffer the drought. So if they don't import now, those countries will be suffering the drought. So when it's time for us to get, I mean, grains, we will not get. Mm. And then they are saying the third one is the most laughable one, calculated to deceive all of us, that cash transfers as well as input support for affected farmers. You see, this government should not think that, you know, and I can understand the agric minister. This agric minister, at the time when the meteorological department was given the warning that there will be a delay rainfall for farm, you know mm. what he was engaging? That was the time he was engaged in the banter to buy the hotel. So he was not listening to the agencies who were warning him at the time. Every time you'll be listening to him on joy, on TV3, on many radio stations in the morning, afternoon and evening, going around explaining why he was the best person fitted to buy the six hotels. And he was not paying attention to the agri sector. Now the hotel sale did not go through. We certainly have to find another revenue handle. If we can't make revenue in hotels, we can make revenue from farming. This is an allegation you're making. It, it, That's yes, it is an allegation I'm making. No, but and it's but a very reasonable Beatrice, one. Because let me I'm Bella, giving you an me. example that these farmers themselves have spoken. Bella, We've actually visited me, some of these me, farms let me show where they've you. complained about how much money they have go, invested and lost. Go. So let me show and so you. if the Ministry of Agri is supposed to come in and support them and they are asking for money to do so, why do you accuse the let minister me, of wanting this you. money for let himself? Let me show you that quantum. Yesterday million. when I saw the release, I spoke to not less than four of the largest rice farmers and sogum farmers in Ghana. They tell us, yes, some farmers have been affected. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what the minister is saying, that they have to support the farmers with input. When it comes to growing cereals in Ghana, especially in the regions they have mentioned, 
Now, they are waiting for harvesting in October. Mm. So they are not going to plant. Mm. They will be doing land preparation from next year, May and June. So, so if you are going to give inputs to farmers... They will need the input from next year, May, where they would have been doing the preparation for farming. So why do you need the $8.3 in the space of three months to spend to support farmers? This is their new creation of COVID. And you see, when it comes to the MPP saying that we need money to support a certain group of people, Bella, we must treat them with all the dis I mean, the contempt it deserves, with all the anger and the courage we can master in us, and we must get angry and angry. You know why? why? When we had COVID, COVID, and over 1,000 citizens lost their lives, and people were dying, and the anxiety, and, and people could practically not tell what next, they came to us and told us, you know what? We want COVID money to do the interventions. They carried 10 million CDs and they gave to Kenoporia Test Enterprise Insurance under the guise of insuring health workers who were exposed to the risk. Where is the insurance premium? Zilch. Nothing paid to the health worker. They carried money. And I have on the screen here the MPP's parliamentary candidate for San Rugu saying that they gave her 100,000. 50,000 in her capacity as a vice chairman and 50,000 as a PC, sharing COVID money. These are the same guys who took $80 million of our monies that they were going to buy vaccines. And they paid for the vaccines. And as I speak to you, we don't have the vaccines. The Auditor General report says it. They paid $60 million to a hospital in Adaklu that they wanted to use this as a holding center. Not one person went to that property as a hospital. In fact, they all went to rest in President Mohammed's UGMC. So these are people who do not have the integrity. And, and Bella, you see, when you were talking about the one village, one dam, and everything, one would have thought that these guys would do some listening. I mean, in spite of the recklessness, they also don't listen. Why do, why do you don't listen? know the thing, and you will not even listen to it. I mean, what kind of arrogance is that? Arrogance and ignorance. I mean, where do you display that? Let me, let me show you. And land on that for me. Yes, and I will land on that. I have so much to say. You see, when you want to boost agriculture, there is no way out except irrigation. Mm. So I'm asking, this money that they want, would they use the money to buy rains? Would they use the money to... Because but the people are complaining about they drought. they what they intend to use the money so, for. So, so what they, what, what do they, how would they solve the challenge of drought? Okay. If you have to solve the challenge of drought, you have to give the people dams, meaningful dams. I had the benefits of following President Mahama to the campaign and we went to the Tamni Dam. At the time we got to the Tamni Dam, the, the temperature was 40 degrees. It was burning. You could feel the bends, but the dam was still at its maximum point. Why? Because dams are not constructed for them to dry yeah. during the dry season. In fact, it is because of the drought. That is why we construct dam. And you see, Laura too copiously said, oh, you see there, one village, one dam is working. The minister who constructed the dam has told us that with 80 million cities to construct over 426 dams, what meaningful dams can she construct? That's mm. what the minister said. And we, this morning, we are being told on national television that those dams are doing well. The dam, the San Dema Dam, which the NDC constructed, it is drought. But the, uh, we are in drought season. Okay. But the dam is still functional. The Tamni Dam, which was almost 80% completed, which they had to complete and bring the canals of farmers to benefit because of partisan parochial interest. They have left the dam there. Okay. And then they are... See... Please land. We must I need reject... To bring the let, in. let me show you. We must reject the MPP. You know why? For every election year, they will create a COVID. This is their COVID. Allow Lerato to speak to this. For it's quite unfair benefit. if you say this is their COVID. This is their COVID. Because they are facts because to it. The minister has let collected me you, Let me give you Hold one on. example. Because as it stands now, we're told that so far... There are 435,872 farmers who have already lost, um, you know, their they? crops. 
3.5 billion Ghana cities in investments is what has been um, lost so, so Bella, due to Bella, the prolonged dry see, condition. When you want to see, when you let see, me bring Lara No, let me conclude on this because you gave her a lot of time. Let me conclude. No, on I that. gave you a lot no, of time. No, you gave her a lot of time. You have I to share the time yes. properly. Let me conclude on it, Bella. No, but I'm when you want to see, to when you want to see the poverty of the reason, look at this. In the seven years. The MPP engaged in planting for food and jobs, that they wanted food security. They wanted to do the right thing. They invested 2.9 billion CDs in planting for food and jobs mm. for the seven years. In three months, when you want to invest in another food for food security, okay. you are investing 8.3. Where is the logic? So let Lerato respond to that. Lerato. Bella, can you re-emphasize the fact that apart from the ban that the farmers are not comfortable with, they agree with the support that government is seeking. I mean, they that had is called it, for right? it. They had called for it, right? So let's establish that. Let's also establish the fact that it's not every farmer in Ghana that is uh, on PFG. You have to apply to be part of it. The fact that we've added PFJ as a program to enhance and boost our food security, that doesn't mean other farming activities don't go on or, or without PFJ, there are no farmers. So if we come and sit at this table, where did the Minister of Finance send the letter? He sent the letter to where? Parliament. Parliament all of us sitting around this table have representatives in parliament who are supposed to have oversight over what government does. So whatever government wants to do. I don't think, with all due respect, the president, the, the minister, can uh, get up and go to every individual's house in this country and say, this is the list of farmers. To make some of these things easy, that is why that platform, GAP, was created to register farmers. Out of a targeted of about 1.2 million farmers, there are already 553,000, a little over that, on the platform. So you can know exactly who you are giving what to. Look, a government comes into power with uh, policies and other things. Apart from what was already existing, the MPP came with a number of policies to enhance our food security, to enhance job creation, and to enhance our other livelihoods. But if we come and sit here today, and the topic is to get support for our farmers, not to belittle any money, even a peswa of a taxpayer's money being used for something by government must be justified and justified. But let's even take the 500, the 500 million How do you dollars, justify that? The 500 million dollars mm -hmm. that we are talking about. We are talking about some over 980,000 farmers cultivating some 1.8 mm -hmm. million hectares of land. That's what we are looking at. So let's even use the 990,000. Let's assume nothing is going into, everything is going as cash to the farmers. Mm -hmm. When you break it down, 900, uh, 980, mm -hmm. when you divide 500 million mm -hmm. by 980, that's 510 per farmer. 510 what, thousand? I'm using oh. the 500. Or oh, 510 million. CDs. When you, 510 dollars. dollars okay. Right? When you uh, calculate the 510 dollars, mm -hmm. when you bring it, let's use an exchange rate of 16. That's some 800, 8,160 Ghana cities. A lot of taxpayers' money. But ask the farmers if a farmer who's farmed and having challenges is giving 800,000. Yeah, they are peasant farmers, they are small-scale farmers and all that, but those who are really hard hit, 8,160 8 Ghana mm -hmm. cities, will it assuage what they've lost? I don't think they will say yes. So if we come and sit here and the topic is to talk about what government is trying to do to assuage the challenges these farmers are having, uh, and, uh, and all we want to do is just talk about things that... But, but is it not a fair point that they're all making? Look, First of all, they're questioning the data. 
We're talking Bella, about over 900,000 farmers. Data? What data? How did we arrive at this at figure this? Bella, of over 900,000 farmers? What data, what data are they speaking to no, now? No, but that's what you, it is your ministry exactly. that has put out that the data. That is what I'm saying. Should so they now question if, it? If any of my sisters here says that this is the list I have seen, let's say 100 uh, farmers, 90 of them I know that they are MPP card bearing members. You sent a rep to uh, uh, the media the press that mm -hmm. the final the ministers are. There was a DC or MC or so mm -hmm. who spoke there. She doesn't even have a, a, she can't even count hundred of uh, party people on that list. Look, as I've always said, if we color health, color food, color uh, education, then we have a problem. Have when it comes to those of us who know better to sit down and discuss issues. Let's discuss this issue. Look, if a Pessoa is being sent, and I emphasize that, Parliament, that is why all these things go to Parliament. Those are representatives. They should be the ones we are holding. Scrutinize us and give us value for money. That is why I refer to the state, uh, the, when I heard on the news that the ranking member was asking for certain things. Mm. If the uh, finance committee, where did the letter go to? The letter we saw, Nanaya is talking about an addendum. You think the Ministry of Finance will just get up and send a letter without justification? If there was, no, there was no plan, why would, they, why would we know? We can't just say that we are just going to be dishing money to without so where is it? What did we say? They read what the money is going to be used so oh, on. Saying that like there's the drought uh, uh, doesn't uh, mean that what there's not harvest. Mean, eh? It's the harvest that they didn't get enough rain to get the quantum that they are projecting. But Lato, if we blame them. it on the rain, that's unfair. I no, mean, is, is it not unfair? Again, unfair in this time of again, digitalization and unfair, technology. Again, unfair, unfair in what and, and Anaya has just said it. That when it comes to the issue of digitalization, hold on. Technology. The meteorological agency had predicted yes. that there was we going to be a drought of this magnitude, so, right? Uh, yes. on we had invested so it. much money in building dams. Really in fact, the Palugu Dam, we're told, was supposed to take care of about 25,000 yes. hectares or so. We and invested, hold on, hold on. Minister, we uh, invested 12 going on million in Palugu Dam. Right? In Palugu dam. Yes. Kebashi, that dam... We are not seeing any work happening Kebashi. here. Kebashi. Kebashi means until now. Oh, okay. Sorry, I assume that you understand Ga. Mm -hmm. But it means until now, yes. there's nothing happening, even at the Pualugu Dam. Mm -hmm. So you look at all these monies that have been invested in what should have been interventions for these farmers. So we don't get to a point where now we are saying that we have food security crisis and so we need to take from our contingency fund. We didn't do that. So you failed for as a PMG. government with, with that, did you not? For PM, look. All these things that you are asking, like you should do one all these things, we will do one, 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 Nana, I'll give you time. Before please. the minister, you cut me short. Before the minister, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, Lerato, please carry on. Before the minister even went into these dry spell issues and what the plans are and what has he gave an update on PFJ mm -hmm. two. If you indulge me, in order not to say anything, the 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 first thing, one of the first things that was done was to create the Ghana Agriculture and Agri Business Platform, so that you have visibility. Mm -hmm. Of the number of people, they are targeted 1.2 million no, what farmers. Have got to do with the no, no, I'm giving, I'm giving you. Can I, can I okay. give you? You, you have only one minute. That's about why dams. I, so I want us to go straight to it. It goes further to say the number of farmers that are the aggregators and all that, and how we achieved the projections we needed for. Don't forget, PFJ is doing poultry and ten crops. Mm -hmm. All those ten crops. I mean, we we, we achieve some level of self sufficiency. But let's go to the other support that PFG. When you go to irrigation development, and these are documents that are, these are verifiable. If we can, out of the procurement process, commence for the construction of 30 new irrigation facilities, which will add 15,500. The construction of small air dams covering total area of 605 hectares mm -hmm. are also currently in progress. The, the, we are contracting those, new dams. Is that what those irrigation saying? schemes are complemented with the construction of 500 boreholes and all that. So these bore, these boreholes, uh, borehole, sorry, these boreholes that you're talking, we are talking about here, mm -hmm. I won't say you, we are talking about here, we're supposed to do what? We're supposed to hold water Land for uh, 
continuous farming mm -hmm. to enable, enhance all year farming. If there is no water. But as we implement policies, what did we say we we're going to do? We just didn't say just build the dams. There was uh, plenty for food and jobs. There was the uh, warehouses that we were building. I think uh, these warehouses that farmers warehouses even complained that, were, that they were too far away from their farms. So even well, when they harvest these crops, they are, there. they are not able so to transport that's them. Something so the crops that, still. So that is anyway. something that the review process of that policy should take into place. Okay, I let mean, me bring Nanaya in. Uh, I can't seem to understand again, your because response. you are refusing to understand. No, 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 it's not no, refusing. No, 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 Are you saying that you are building more dams? What dams that you have built in the past? That's what I'm explaining, and you are not. Allowing me to explain, we said we're going. Listen, that time. we we said PFJ, we said one village wonder, we said warehouses, right? Mm -hmm. Then the end of the value chain is the uh, adding value to it because one of the challenges we keep having that keeps uh, bringing our exchange rate issues and all that is not adding value to our raw material and exporting them. So that's where the one D one. So it's a whole value chain. These policies have been implemented. They've hmm. come with challenges. You improve them. But as you improve them, you also learn from it. So okay. with these no, no, no. Uh, 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 dams that Agri Ministry has budgeted for, they are going to have borrowers. We are budgeting for more. Let's we see. budgeted for some. What we went ahead. You. We built Look, it. Listen, Let me bring Nanaya see, in. Hold you on. need to understand so how these things work. You hold do, on, you hold do, on. Your you time do. is up. No, no. You Your do, time is you up. Do. Why, why, why do, why do you add on programs and projects hold, to existing facilities? Hold on. Farming has been going Let me go to Nanaya. But you bring in projects and programs to enhance what is going on. Yeah, but, That's why you have projects. That's but you also you need programs. to check on the ones you've done already to make sure that they're also working. Of course. Well, so you don't now what release what money you for mention? more. You said 400. So, so let I me come to Nanaya, please. You're going to give me those that you said. And I also have a list. In fact, so far I've listed a few of them. And I've also listed a few that are I told you the Iopia Dam is dried up. Call them. Hatinan and Kanan District. There's a number of them. Hold on. Well, there's a whole documentary where journalists visited these dams. And what is the number And they were dried. So let me come to Nanaya so she can also speak on this. Because, again, we're asking that all these money spent. We don't see much happening. And now Lerato is telling us, pay the documents, that there are even more dams that are being built. Irrigation <laughs> is where we are moving to. Hmm. Oh, Bella, me, I'm fatigued with this massaging of the truth. So, as I sit here, I've even lost my, my I'll thoughts. i for accountability. Because, but not, I, I mean, seriously, uh, I, I believe that the minister should be sacked. If there is anything uh, like sacking in Nanado's government. Because he left the job... He looked elsewhere, thinking about himself. In executing his, his mandate, he was selfish and he was following his business. And that is the hotel. So he forgot. He, he didn't have any, I mean, he didn't have any thought about what he has been asked to do. And from the way things are going, it's possible he left it completely because he did not even allow his people mm. because the ministry is a team we have the chief director the deputies i don't think he was even supervising them as it stands now i don't think he's fit for purpose and i think that he should be made to go because you see this is negligence at its best where is he going to import the grains from the tomatoes that we we eat in this country is imported from a dry land that is Burkina Faso. When you go to Burkina Faso, it is dry. It's desert territory. It's a desert, desert area, dry. But they've been able to build dams to irrigate their farms to import. Do you get me? Mm. With all the issues with the weather and global warming, we should even have a plan to irrigate our farms and not depending on rain. Mm. You see, His Excellency, that is why when he speaks, sometimes I wonder, and when I talk, they say all manner of things. You are touting digitalization. You are touting modernization. You are touting technology. You cannot in your government use these three facets to promote agriculture. Do you get me? There are blueprints that you can even look at. Kwame Nkrumah under the CPP had the blueprint for agriculture in this country. So even if you don't even want to look at what the NDC has done, look at what the CPP did with all the dams that were built in the irrigation that helped agriculture to boost in this nation. This government doesn't really think about us, whether we, we, we live or we die. Bella, they don't care.
That is why I mean, they make a justice. Sometimes eh, they have to say we are sorry. They have to respect us and say that we are sorry. Forgive us. Because they have taken this nation for granted. They do things anyhow and nobody speaks. You see, with the kind of corruption in this nation, I believe that if the Kenyans hear about it, they will come here and come and demonstrate on our behalf. That's true. Where can you ever give these lame reasons to take out 8 billion Ghana cities? There is no data to it. If the farmers want it, they want, what kind of support are they looking for? In this, uh, this day and age, where do you just distribute money Cash to people? Funds. Cash. Mm. When you, were, you could have put plans in place to ensure that even in drought, the, the expectation would have been that even in drought, you have a bumper harvest. Then we know that you are working. Then we know that you are fit for purpose. Do you understand? The former minister, when he was there, he had his own issues. But he was able to make sure that he sustains agriculture. This thing that they are talking about, they are only talking about grains. It's poultry part of it. Yeah. It's cattle yes. rearing part of it. It's tomatoes part of it. So it is only grains that is drought ridden. They are in the north. Pardon? They are in the north. We have to buy the boots. But I am saying, is it the only thing in the north? <laughs> Well, but, but he says that they, these areas that are affected, they add up to about 62%. Of I the am saying that the in the north, they grow yam. Mm. They cultivate yam. If you want yam proper, go to the north. Ginger. Sure. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. So why are they not talking about other food crops? But they are talking about grains. What is it in these grains mm -hmm. that we, we, we don't know? I do not think that we should allow them to just go and take our money and waste it on elections. This thing that they are doing is a con no. Don't do come on, Lara. Lara, to please, I beg you. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do come on because you see, Lara, I it don't want to. to my, the my, 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 fa my father taught me not to use certain words. Otherwise, I would have used it. As we were kids, he taught us not to use certain words because you cannot take us for granted anymore. This is enough. This is enough because La uh, 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 Bella, where is the list of farmers? Where are they? The people who came to do the, the, the press conference. What kind of support did they say that they needed? They so, need cash? Yes. I'll read what, and I wrote <laughs> yeah. what they, they said. You're so they said them. that we recommended some stopgap measures. Provision of input support for farmers who have lost their yield. Provision of food aid and cash for okay. affected farmers. Uh, okay, Bella, what it's about those who lost their the money farmers. through the bonds, the DDP? Oh, we also oh, need... No, 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 please, I beg you. We also need. They so also. We are discussing no, no. They also case. need. Please, please, I beg you. Let her make yeah. a point. Let's ah, see what, what she are you talking yeah, about? We are also Ghanaians. What are you saying? They also need cash. The people who died because they could not get their coupons. They don't need cash. I mean, seriously. They should tell us exactly what it is. They can't just go and take money and get some farmers to come and do press conference that they need cash. They should tell us who and who has lost what. How much have the farmers lost? Whoever has lost money should let us know how much you have lost. After press conference, anybody can do press conference. I can also say I'm a farmer, I need money, I have lost money. Oh, but this is a recognized group. I am saying whether recognized or not, they should come and tell us how each one of them lost money. How much? So how much are we giving? Yes, how much are we giving? You can't just come and say we need $8 billion and that is it. No receipts to it, nothing. No addendum, no budget, nothing. The people should come and tell us that we need A, B, C, D. So if, 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 if what about the, the people who yeah, sell things? Mm. Huh? And you lose money on the exchange rate. Are they going to give us money? Because we have lost, when you go and buy at a certain amount, you come back and it is different. Next time you are going to buy, it is more. And you lose money. That one, will they give us the difference? Let's, you see, let's be serious about this. It is a reason for somebody to chop money during this election. We beg them. If the farmers need money, they should give us a list. Show proof, better particulars of how they lost the money, how much they have lost, what kind of uh, uh, um, uh, farms they have. What they are cultivating. 
Because now it is as if the focus is on grains. Are they cultivating grains? They should let us know. Bella, you can't just come and say. When you say let us know, the whole country? Yes, the whole country. Okay, because what if they forwarded this list to the ministry already? They should come and publish it. The media is they there. Publish it okay. They should why, publish it. They should publish it. Please, hold please. Hold please. Please, please. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get hold that. On. Please. No, please. What has gone? Please. What has gone to Parliament? <laughs> has Parliament told us anything? <laughs> if they have any <laughs> better particulars, they should come <laughs> and publish it in the media <laughs> for everybody to see transparency. <laughs> transparency. Right to information. There's a bill called Right to Information Bill. This is information that we need. They should come and publish. Now you can use it as a citizen. Please, farmer. We're going to use please, it. Please, farmer. Okay. We hold on, hold on, I'll, I'll come Farmer to you. Farmer A, I, I, I lost, I mean, two CDs on this, that, that. So they will give me two CDs. Farmer B, they should let us know, they should give us names, farms, where they are located. They can't just come and say, we need this. That minister, he should go. He's fit to stand on platforms and make noise. That is embellish. He should go because he, he, he cannot do this work. Okay. Auntie, I mean, yeah. has it gotten to this point where we're asking the minister to go? Well, it hasn't gotten to that point maybe for... For, for the reason that he just came. Mm. There, there was one before him who didn't, uh, to me, didn't do anything. <laughs> um, you know, I'm asking, I just want to ask, Bagri Dam, mm. the spillage, yeah. has government Not ever yeah. paid one city to those who mm. are yes, affected yes. by the Bagri Dam? Every year, Bagri Dam, there's a spillage. Every year, we lose, we lose farmlands. Those farmlands grow onions, beans, soya beans, and rice. Yet we have never compensated these farmers. Are you referring to this government only or previous governments all, all as previous well? governments. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if there is going to be something for farmers losing monies or their investments, the Bagri Dam should mm. also be, the victims of Bagri Dam should also mm. be considered. In fact, they're asking for it now you because understand. the water is spilling at the moment. And exactly. We're told that farms and are and, being and meanwhile, no one has ever been given a penny. We don't even listen to them. And then I'm also asking, if we are going to be looking at people who have lost investments in our food chain, let's not look at grains only. How about those people who are into fisheries? The local fisheries that the river bodies have been polluted and therefore they don't have any form of livelihood. Sure. Has anybody paid, paid them any money? Or has anybody taken them into consideration? There is a depletion even from the sea. When I was growing up, herrings, mm -hmm. when it comes to September, herrings were the thing of everybody. When you're going to school, you fry them, you use it for shito and all that. Herrings are depleted. And herrings should be the cheapest thing, form of protein that our, our households must have. But we don't even have them. So let's not look at a group who may have been prompted because one or two of their members has lost money from, from uh, maybe farming and therefore has decided that Mumpes kept me mying and therefore bring a list or, or bring a suggestion that they should be paid and you come and ask for $500 million. It's not going to happen. If they are going to have to ask for that money, Mr. Greek Minister, include the Bagri Dam, include the uh, um, river, the rivers that have been polluted, those who were uh, uh, fish farming there, include all of them. So that we know that you are be being fair. And like um, the Nanaya said, how about all those other businesses? I mean, we don't pay for so many losses. Why is it that this particular group? And to think that some of these farmers actually grow their produce for exports, not mm -hmm. for, you know, not, not for our local consumption. Mm -hmm. So if you've been growing your produce, exporting it to the European Union, collecting your dollars, banking it there, coming here. And now your, your, your farm is probably banked or whatever, and you are asking for us to pay or to support you. Does it make sense? It's not right. We were in this country when some group of young people were sent outside this country to go to Israel, mm -hmm. to go and do some form of studies to come and uh, help us with farming. I haven't heard of their impact. Oh, this is a government that said... They were going to bring 18 million day old chicks to support our poultry farmers. Yet, just about a few months ago, when we were having salad, you couldn't buy a bed. It was so expensive. So, we are just asking genuine questions. We are concerned about how you're using our money. 
Because at this moment, accountability is zero in all sectors. We haven't finished dealing with the African games. And you are bringing this one too. Huh? Let us do one at a time. Every time, it's money, 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 no accountability. It's not something that we will, we will all want to support. Mm. So I, I just think that we have to go back to the drawing board because what we've done as a country is short-term interventions, poor management of investments, poor public sector accountability, and this has cost us this. So let's go back. Let's start with let's real, real policies, resetting, real policies, <laughs> aquaculture, food basket that we know we can get from the five northern regions. These are all things that are policies that are good. Okay. But you can't just sit back and then the last minute you come and it's always three months well, to elections. No, no, no. Baba Rufai agrees with you. He says cocoa farmers also lost their cocoa farms through Galamse. Exactly. How much is government, uh, government paying government for these them. cocoa farmers? farmers. But, yes. but let me so bring Beatrice people. in. Uh, Baba, like, uh, as I said early on, this is a very irritating matter that because you're on national television, you need to keep your composure. Yeah. And, so and, and be guarded, so and, and be guarded in your statements. I mean, we've given plethora of examples that Kosovo spillage, the cocoa okay. fab, the, the bond holders, okay. and this government, you see, it's also mean? a reflection of how this government has been so negligent in every aspect, yeah. because almost everybody has suffered under this government. But you know, it is election year, it is convenient we win the northern vote, and so let's, let's do something, let's create a COVID. It's, it's very painful. And, and you know the painful aspect. If you read page 127, specifically paragraph 635 mm -hmm. of the 2023 budget, the government said that they had procured seeds for drought tolerant, seedlings for drought tolerant to, to produce maize. So it means that this government knew that we may experience drought. And as far back as 2023, in their budget, they made allocation for drought-tolerant seedlings. So, so why are we having to discuss this at this time? What I can tell the many Ghanaian people, the young people, the women, the unemployed people, the older people whose bones have been affected this morning is that, this government simply wants a third term. They cannot bring themselves to a place where they do not have access to the taxes again because they cannot fund their luxurious lifestyle. And in 2020, under the guise of COVID, they went to household and did cash sharings. And they had a budget deficit mm. of over 15 percent. And right after the reading of the budget, the international money market cut Ghana off. And that began our war, where our city moved from five cities today. Lorato is telling us to use the exchange rates of even 16, 16. cities. That's the reality. Why should I lie? That's the reality and true. I that's the, I that's the reality of the Ghanaian life, that the MPP has messed up our lives. And this is another vote-buying gimmick that they will come to you and tell you that for the eight years we have been in power, forget about the suffering as a bondholder. Okay. Forget about the, the fact that we did not support you through the planting for food and jobs as a farmer. Forget about the fact that today, if you sell your produce as a farmer, you cannot buy bags of cement because okay. cement price is high. Forget about every hardship you are going through. Forget about how we have derailed the progress of our nation in more than 40 years, the lives of people, the businesses, and future of even young people in this nation have been destroyed. And you know what? Take this money and vote for us. But like I keep saying, please, we owe it as a responsibility like the people of our sin not did. Please take the money. And even demand for more. Take the goodies, whatever they will bring to you, take it. And vote against the NPP with all the pain and courage, you know what? So that every political party will know that elections have consequences. That when we vote and we elect our leaders, we do so in the honest belief that our lives will be better than they came to meet us and not worse. Okay. Never in the history of this nation All right. have we had a panel of four.
where three people are agreeing that a wrong thing has been done. Uh, today, feels no, that's you not see, today, Ijin or him is not fair. It's obviously a not former fair. secretary it's says that. Not fair. Not fair. There's a former secretary that. of the MPP Please, says that she wants this to reduce. MPP the mass of go. farmers to Please. a vote. My, 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 my this is a vote that is going to solve the intelligence of farmers. And we must reject this. Like women are suffering. Okay. Okay. Women the are suffering. The farmers are hearing. The people are they suffering. They made a request. If you keep wasting the money, you can't get a request. So let me just read a quick message. Good morning. So this one says that, please tell Nanaya to get her fax right regarding the number of farmers who have been affected by the dry spell. Please tell Nanaya to get her fax right regarding the number of farmers who have been affected by the dry spell. The Ghana Agriculture and Agribusiness platform. It says that it enabled the ministry to identify and register 553,000 farmers out of a target of 1.2 uh, for 2024 and the registration is still ongoing. So he's trying to say that there's actually um, a list of farmers and if anybody wants to check, the data is there. But I've been speaking to Lerato Musa Saka. She's a member of the NPP communications team. Nanaya, ladies. Oh, easy. Nanaya Chibim Janto is the former general, Sec uh, general secretary for the CPP. Rodilene Imoru Ayana is a member of Alliance for Revolutionary Change. And Beatrice Anan Esquire is a spokesperson, deputy spokesperson for the John Mahama campaign team. Today we are officially launching your election command center. Uh, I'll read the, the promo later. Coco, should I go at this point? The way it's going. All right, we'll be back. We'll be back with you.